Hello, everyone. Welcome to another lesson on fundamentals of robotics. This is Dr. Maddie Babayasol from Mechorhythm. In this lesson and a couple of future lessons, we will talk about the necessary tools needed to express robot motions. These tools are mandatory to express when you want to represent the configurations, velocities, and forces for robots. If you haven't done already, be sure to um, subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. We'd love to have you as part of the Mechorhythm family. This video has also a written version on our website. My suggestion is to watch the video first and then go read the lesson on the website. It will help you to understand and grasp the material better. So without further ado, let's get started. A free vector is a geometric quantity, and it's an arrow in our three-dimensional flat space R3 that is not rooted anywhere. It has a length and a direction. In robotics, a free vector is denoted by the capital V. A vector, on the other hand, is the same as free vector, but is expressed with its coordinates in a reference frame and length scale chosen for the space. In robotics, vectors are represented by an italic letter V in R3. A vector is dependent on the choice of the coordinate frame and length scale, whereas the underlying free vector is unchanged by choice of the coordinate frame or the length scale. In other words, the free vector is coordinate free, whereas the vector is um, coordinate dependent. A vector can also represent the point P in the physical space. If we choose to give this physical space a reference frame and a length scale, the point is a vector from the origin of this reference frame to the point. It's then represented as an italic P in that space. The same point has a, uh, has a different representation by changing the length scale and the reference frame as you can see in this figure. In robotics, frames are important. We use frames to represent the robot's configurations, velocities, and forces causing the motion. Frames in robotics have an origin. They consist of orthogonal x, y, and z coordinate axes, and they are right-handed. And this means that the cross product of the x and y axes is z, and so on. They are stationary, and this is from Newton's laws that the reference frames are always considered to be inertial. Positive rotation about an axis follows the right-hand rule. If you align your thumb with the axis of rotation, then the positive rotation is in the direction that the fingers curl as you see in this animation. In order to conclude this lesson, I want to show you a simple demonstration. Suppose that this is a coordinate frame attached to a robot joint. I want to show the positive rotation around x, y, and z directions. So, if this is the x direction, the positive rotation around the x direction would be when my uh, sum is in the direction of the axis, the curling fingers show the positive rotation. So this would be the positive rotation around this x-axis. The positive rotation around the y-axis would be in this direction. So it would be in this direction. And the positive rotation around the z-axis is in this direction. So this shows the positive rotation around the z-axis. 
Thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. Also, uh, take a look at our website with lots of great lessons there. We'd love to have you as part of our great Mecuridum family. See you next time. Bye.